What is going on? Welcome to the final, tentatively final, I suppose, flask tutorial uh, video in our practical flask tutorial series. In this video, we're just going to kind of wrap up everything with some final things. Uh, at this point, you really should have everything you need to make at least this uh, very website. Now, just in case you're looking for uh, some code, the example code on how something is done, or maybe in the future even you want some sample code for how something is done, or if you think you can do something better, uh, I do have everything up on GitHub. If you just go to github.com slash python programming, come here. Uh, this not only has all of the source codes for uh, most of the series anyways, they're all here, uh, the other thing it has is the website, so let me try and find it. Uh, let's just type, oh, here it is right here. So here's the Python program on that website. We can click here, and here is everything you need. There are some small changes. For example, dbconnect.py is not filled out. You will, of course, need to enter in your own database there. And then the email script will also error because it has nothing in the fields. You would need to fill that one in as well. That one's just in case we get a donation. So uh, anyway, other than those two things, you should be able to basically take this entire website, uh, just copy and paste it over, and this is the real Python programming.net. Now, uh, if you want to get the code, you can of course clone it however you want, but then also you can submit code if you want to be a part of uh, helping out on either improving this, or you can also improve any of these other programs and stuff that we've written over time. Uh, feel free to request an invite. Uh, not too particular on the invites, so you can't really do too much damage to us anyways. Uh, it's not really connected to the, the true website. So anyway, uh, if you want to be a part of that, let me know. Just uh, ask for an invite and you'll probably get one. Uh, you can also fork it and all that. So back to the website. Uh, the one thing I really wanted to touch on mainly in this video is... Once you have a website, how do you actually get found? So if you look on Google, there's all kinds of people, you know, putting forth their SEO tricks and all this. Uh, for the most part, there are no tricks. There's no shortcuts to getting your website found before everyone else. Backlinks, while they work when used right, are often abused and they don't work and you will eventually be penalized. Um, so what is the main way that people get their websites found? That's Google.com. It's in Google.com's best interest to get the best content and give it to their their uh, you know the people that are searching their users. So it's in Google's best interest to do this automatically. You don't actually need to cater to Google very much anymore. In the past, you you needed to and you could cater to Google and you could kind of abuse it to the point where you would do some tricks and you could get easily on the first page and fairly easily the top results. Nowadays, that's not really the case, and if you do cheat enough, you'll actually be penalized and you'll be hurt. Uh, so that's the first thing. So, so what is the way to get ranked on Google? The way to get ranked on Google is to have content. Okay, so content is king. Google knows this and Google's very good. By the time you put your website up, you can actually, um, you can track how many times Google even comes to your website. But you can do this either through Google Analytics or you can actually track for what robots are visiting your website. Uh, and you'll see that Google actually crawls your website a lot. And so almost immediately when your website is up, you're going to find that Google is on your website. So uh, getting Google there, just in case Google isn't visiting your website, the best way to get Google there immediately is to create a sitemap and you submit that sitemap to, I think it's webmasters.google.com. Let me try that webmaster google let's see what we find yes google.com slash webmasters uh, so you sign up there submit your website submit your sitemap now if you have a wordpress site some sitemaps are easy enough uh, but if you're doing flask sometimes a sitemap can be hard so this is the sitemap code as i just said we have all of the code is available right here github.com slash python programming so you can copy this or you can just head there and copy the code if you want uh, I'll just kind of explain it real quick. This code I actually grabbed um, from somebody. Somebody put up the code. I changed a couple of things. I can't remember exactly what I... I believe it was actually this line here uh, was not valid. But anyway, uh, we brought this in. This is basically at app root sitemap.xml. That's the address you want to your sitemap. Uh, when you submit a sitemap to Google, uh, you should tell it actually where what the link is, but other 
uh, crawling engines are going to just automatically search for your website slash sitemap.xml. So you'll want to just go ahead and put it at that URL. Uh, and then, so anyway, so you've got, this is the app root. This one's going to go ahead and generate this. And basically the way it generates that is it actually just goes through your init.py file and it's going to get all the links. It's going to get them via these rules here. It's going to add that to your URL here and it's going to post that to your sitemap. So we can actually go to our sitemap. Did I not? Yeah, here we go. So it's pythonprogram.net slash sitemap.xml. And here's a nice XML document of all the stuff on my website. So obviously as you get a, the bigger and bigger website you get, the more stuff you have. You can build this sitemap all on your own by hand if you wanted. That's not recommended, but if you wanted, you could. So anyway, you can use that code, make, you know, submit your sitemap. You actually don't have to do anything though. Google doesn't require you to even tell them, hey, I have a website. Google will find it, okay? Um, as far as backlinks are concerned, I wouldn't really worry too much about them, but of course, you know, if you, for example, I have pythonprogramming.net, I try to share that website on places like Reddit, and of course I've got it all over the place on YouTube here, and that kind of stuff. But actually, pythonprogramming.net, I already get about anywhere from 600 to 800 organic visits a day, per day. And um, I've not done anything. I've not really, I've got some backlinks and stuff, but for the most part, actually not much. And the website isn't even a year old. And actually I just changed from WordPress now to my own site, but either way, it's not a year old. And we're already getting that much organic. So for the big guys, that's not very many organic searches anyways. But you can imagine that's actually a pretty big number of people that are finding my website through organic searches. And really the only thing I've done is submit my sitemap. The, only, the biggest thing if you want to get visitors is to have good content. And generally when you have content, you want to make sure that you know you, you have good language. So don't have typos if you can avoid them. This version of this website probably has a lot of typos because I don't have any form of spell check. I'm generally pretty good about typing, but I'm sure I've got typos. You want to watch out for that. You want to watch out for confusing language. Google knows what is confusing language and what's not confusing language. So you want to be careful about that. Google also knows uh, if your website is responsive or not. Uh, so that's by responsive, I mean, you know, if we take this website, uh, what can we do with this? Can we squish it up? You know, and does, does it go awry? turns out we can squish it up so we can view this on a phone, we can do all kinds of stuff uh, and it should still work and all of that. So Google knows that. Google knows how long does it take uh, for your website to, to load, right? So this website loads pretty darn fast. But if you have a website that doesn't necessarily load very fast, um, generally anything above like 500 milliseconds is a bad thing. Uh, you're going to want to figure out how you can get your website to load fast. Google knows that people like pretty pictures. Make sure you've got some pictures from time to time, not too many, not too little. Uh, Google is slightly impartial to ads. A lot. Some people think that maybe Google might rank you higher if you have ads because it's in their best interest. That's not really true. If anything, ads actually hurt your website a little bit because users don't like ads. Uh, so uh, you can think about that, pictures, content, but the biggest, biggest, biggest thing is that you just have good content. Uh, probably the biggest ranking into your website is what do actual users do on your website. Okay, so Google knows, especially now since Google's got Google browsers, uh, Google knows what, how long are users spending on your website? What's your bounce rate, i.e. how many people come to your website and get out? Uh, so how many people are sticking around? How long are they sticking around? Are they interacting with your content? Do they appear to be enjoying your website? That is what will drive Google to rank your website a little higher and a little higher over time and slowly you know, get you up into that, that uh, you know, first page and the first result for various things. But it can take a while, so you just have to keep that in mind. Uh, there's just no shortcut really. but. Uh, it can happen really, really fast, especially if you're in a niche market. If you're in a really tough market, uh, it can take a while. It can take a while to get there. Uh, so anyways, I uh, just thought I would kind of cover a few things, especially the sitemap. The sitemap is pretty important. Uh, the other thing you'll want to always have is a uh, robots.txt. So we've got pythonprogramming.net, and then we can go to robots.txt. 
and we can see that user agent um, is basically we're allowing anyone and then disallow is what we want to disallow the robots to visit so we're disallowing the register page we're disallowing the login page and we're disallowing uh, donation success because I didn't want because every time you visit donation success um, I get an email so uh, have fun if you want to spam that but <laughs> anyway if you visit it I get an email so I wanted the robots to stop doing that because they were visiting it pretty often and I imagine that now that I've said this someone's gonna go through and be like ah visit <laughs> and I'll have to like uh, I don't know track IPs or something and get that to go away so anyway thanks for that guys uh, <laughs> anyway uh, donation success has it so I didn't want them to do it and again robots.txt um, you know you can't have it's a little harder to have uh, simple like files that, so like robots.txt is a great example it's not really a text file it's a pseudo text file no different than our XML file is not really an XML file uh, we're just kind of faking it uh, and we're doing the same thing with robots.txt so robots.txt here it is this is the live version the dev version is just disallow all I didn't want any robots on the dev site uh, but this would be like the live one and literally it just returns a string of text <laughs> so oh and and the reason why we do that by the way is the robots actually they don't see it like this robots.txt when the robot visit visits what does the robot see the robot sees source code so let's look at the source code this is what the robot sees okay so uh, anyway, that's that. I just wanted to cover up uh, some of those final things. Again, if there's anything that you feel I've forgotten or whatever, uh, you can always check it out just by coming to the GitHub slash Python programming. You want to be a part of it, that's fine. Ask for an invite. All the code is up here. You can update all of that. But most importantly, if you're interested in the website code, it's all right here. So, for example, we could open up the init.py, which is kind of big, but here it all is. There's all the code. And then, for example, we can probably find robots.txt. There she is. So, there's that. So, uh, thank you all for following along on this tutorial. I had a lot of fun making it, and I actually kind of discovered a few things by going over my code a second time around. So, it was kind of nice for me as well. I love Flask. I hopefully, you, you guys have uh, found a lot of enjoyment with Flask. I love how open it is. So, it's been a huge help for me uh, to finally be able to use a web development language that I like. I don't have any interest in PHP. Tried Django. I could do it. I just didn't like it, but really fell in love with Flask. So, Hopefully it was useful for you guys, and I hope you guys get as much out of it as I have. So anyways, stay tuned for more tutorials, questions, comments, suggestions, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.